Hey everybody, David R. Becker here with Becker Art. And today I'm going to talk to you about sketching from a freehand sketching to your watercolor paper. So watercolors tend to put their painting, their sketch down before they actually paint. Uh, oil painters, they do it with their paint. They actually are drawing right from um, with their paints. Watercolors tend to take a pencil and we sketch down our picture first on what we're going to be painting because we have to know what it is, our lines, where we're gonna put it, because it's very different from oil painting. It doesn't layer on top of each other, right? So I'm gonna show you how to freehand your sketch onto your watercolor paper, and instead of using a transfer paper and maybe a transfer. Though I am also gonna talk about that a little bit too. So let's go right into our tabletop here and get going. So here's a picture we're gonna be painting this Thursday. This Thursday, um, I always do a Thursday free paint along that I do on my YouTube channel that you can just come in and watch. Most people watch it and then they do it afterwards because it's there forever and you just learn a little bit about. And I will be um, drawing this one on there actually. This one, this time I'm actually gonna do the drawing before we get going on the painting. And so I'm gonna show you how to do that before we even get going. <laughs> and so normally what happens here is I take a photograph and if I'm even plein air painting, I'm doing these things in my mind, in my head. And I've, I've drawn for years and years and years as a starboard illustrator. So drawing to me has become like a, a second nature. It's, uh, it's not that um, I don't think about this to an extent like you were going to be thinking about it. So the first thing I do usually is I take and I um, put an X in my mind uh, on the fixture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm thinking. And I will put an X in here. I'm gonna yellow, of course, you're not going to see a yellow. So maybe I will make this a different color. I'm using my um, Holbein Artist color pencils set here, but let's make me take it um, a blue, just so you can see the difference between these lines. Because these lines you would actually not put down onto your paper. You would just, um, what I do is I'll just put it on here to find the center, you know, to find the center, I'm just gonna look here at my board and. You can take a ruler if you need to. I'm just gonna eye it up and I'm kind of making it from here to here. So I'm just thinking it's a, probably a right around there. And I can even put a really thin line here just to kind of see if this is correct. You know, I'm just gonna kind of put a little thin line there. And again, I'm doing this in my head when I am doing this. I'm not doing this with a ruler. I'm not putting it down there. I'm just kind of trying to figure that out right there. So I'm gonna say that's the middle of the page. And so that's what I look and then I also look at different things for when I'm doing this, I look, okay, there's an X. So what large lines do I see in my photo that um, represent that line, that X. And as, and since this is a one point perspective project, if you can see that, see right through here, let me just show you with my pointer. This right here is like a, it's a one point perspective and actually it's almost a vanishing point. It's almost right there. Um, which is kind of weird that um, I just picked the picture. And that's a kind of a good thing to do too. Is um, so this this little curb right here, this little step up right here, that almost lines up right up with that. But before we do that, before we start drawing, I'm going to show you. I think about this, and then I also think about this um, right here. Let me see what we got to do here. We got to go like this, and so we also. I also think about this. So this I will put in with a red pencil. Um, then you'll see where, um, you know, I'll go half, this is half, right? Because I already found my center, so that would be half. And I'll put this a little bit darker so you can see it. So that, again, I'm thinking about this and then I may cut that in half. And um, I'm just putting my finger on the on line here so I can make a nice straight line. And then up here, same thing. And look at this, I can even follow my, um, right about there, go across. So there's my red lines, and then I do it on the center. Same thing, and I like to put my finger here on the side. See how I put my finger, I can guide my finger, and I'll find the center by just starting here, going up and going down. And like I said, I, I'm not doing this um, on the actual paper. I'm not putting red. This is just to show you guys that this is how I'm thinking. I'm thinking, I'm looking for these points. There are some artists who, um, some students of mine that do make these lines in there so they know where things are at. 
Um, don't make them with the, this kind of pencil though. <laughs> Just use a very light, light, um, almost not even a soft pencil because it, you want it to be, be able to erase it really easily. So you put them on really light with a regular pencil. This is an ebony pencil, which I normally don't use for um, sketching my, my pencil line onto watercolor paper because it's harder, it's, too, it's almost too thick, too dark. And uh, I just use a regular 2B pencil when I'm putting on my paper so I can erase things. But so now, now that I have this part in, in my head, I'm looking at the scene. And if I'm out plein air painting, I'm getting a edge around it. I'm trying to figure out what my dimensions are and what this, this um, square is, this image view, the viewfinder. I would, I would have to know where I'm stopping because if I'm there, I'm seeing beyond this point. And I, so I have to, I like to take a picture and I like to like block it in. I like to know that what's in this corner. And so I do that phys uh, mentally in my head. I'm going, okay, I'm not going to go beyond this point. I'm not going to be on this point. I'm not going beyond this point. And so if you have a photograph of it, that's actually a good thing to do. I also have a viewfinder and look in there and know where you're stopping because you need to know where the halfway point is and where the X is so you can find your center of this picture. And those are things you all do. You practice that and it becomes very simple because you're making these things big lines. And so the first thing I do is I go for my big lines, right? And so what are the big lines? Look at this is a big line right here. You can see my red arrow right here. That's a big line. This is um, a line. Look at that goes to the X that we had. That's a big line. This line right here, going right down the middle of these two lines, the red lines, that's a big line. So you're starting to look for the big lines. Look at this one. This one's pointing again. This little wire right here is pointing towards my center in there. So what I'm going to do is first sketch in all those big lines. All right, so let's start out with this one. This one's very easy. This is the biggest one. And I'm just going to start out with the biggest lines, full lines. And this goes from up here. And I first draw it really lightly. I just do a really light line. And I'm using my finger to run it across here because I know this is just a little bit beyond right here. And now my my paper is just a little bit wider than my image here. My image is a little bit squished a little bit. This is a little bit wider, so that's gonna that's gonna affect it a little bit. So my painting painting is gonna have the same dimensions, but they're a little bit not they're not gonna have the same dimensions, but the proportions will be a little bit wider than what is in here. But they'll all fall into place. So I'm, I'm stretching my picture a little bit. So again, I'm going down here, making this little line. This is all the way down to about the third line here. It's in thirds. I cut it in thirds. And so it goes down to about there. And then it kind of takes this line. And remember, I had that yellow line up there. And so that was right here. That's the top of that, that step. So I can just take that right there to the edge. And that's that's one, that's one line I know is there, right? And I'm going to make it really dark for you guys to see. Uh, I wouldn't make it this dark when I'm actually painting it. Um, that's way too dark. But I'm going to do it for you guys so you can see where my lines are at, the big lines. I have to establish these big lines. And so that goes all the way up there, right? And then what's the next big line is this one right here. kind of comes from up at top. There's a, I'm not sure what that is, like an overhanging, overhang type of thing. And that goes down to about there. And then this goes right in the middle of these two, the red lines that I say right there. This goes right almost in the middle. And there's a big line that kind of comes all the way down, kind of goes past this line. You can see, again, I'm going to use my pointer here because I can't show you that. <laughs> this line is right in half, right? Halfway. When it gets to this middle of the line, all of a sudden it stops. And then there's this little outbreak. And I think it's, it's people sitting there at a table. So that's a um, little table, and then these tables come out a little bit farther. So get that whole big line, that picture, and it goes right to here. When it gets here, then the people comes out. And I'm not drawing little things yet. I'm just drawing big things so I can establish where things are going to be at. And then this tabletop right here is part of this big line I've got going still here. It's the, bo it's a, it's the bottom of this table. kind of goes to this point. And then... Um, I noticed that this is an uh, angle to the set, uh, to the vanishing point, and so I'm just going to put that line in there, and it goes almost to this edge of this table, which is right here. So look at that big line, big lines, right? Big, big lines. Another big line um, is this line, this wire, actually coming from here and pointing to this 
corner right here. And it kind of goes down right here. This is a wire, but it's helping me because I, it, it shows me where things are at. And then there's a, there's a line that goes in here and it wraps around. There's a little wire. And then this is a big line here. That's the window. So see how I'm just get, picturing all my big, big area lines. And so now let's see another big line. So here in this rectangular shape, I'm going to have uh, right about here. It's about almost halfway. I always say a lot of times I say almost halfway or halfway or a little bit less than halfway. And that kind of goes to this direction. It's that, that little awning top and then it stops right at the line and goes towards the vanishing point. And we do this type of thing. So there's that. And then there's another little awning right there. So it all, it will all start coming together because it's like you're putting a puzzle together, but you don't start with um, like a puzzle, a real puzzle. You start with those small pieces. This one, you're looking for the big picture. And so you're putting all those big pictures in there. It's almost like you're doing the frame of the puzzle, getting it established, you know, because don't you do that when you're doing a puzzle? You always do the outer edge first so you know what's inside there. But this is like a bunch of outside frames. So you're doing all the big picture, all the big stuff. Now look at this line right here. This line right here is a little bit angled, right? And in the photograph, a lot of times if I see stuff like that, I realize that the camera, the lens on the camera is bending this the wrong way. This is really not happening in real life. This door, well, maybe it is, maybe it is, but I don't think it should be. Um, so I'm going to straighten out this door. So the camera a lot of times bends, bends the picture and especially perspective. It just bends it because a, a lens on a camera is rounded. And so that's what it does to the like images like this. And so what I'm going to do is take that line and make it straight. And that's almost right in the middle here. So that's almost in the middle and just take that straight down and take it right off the page. And that's my doorway. And then right next to that is another line. That's the dark part. And that goes to about halfway right here. So I'm going to stop it right there. Then there's a potted plant right there. And I'm going to put that in there real quickly because it's like, like a rectangular shape. And so I'll just kind of, kind of put it in there. And then the top of the plant goes right to there. And then this is side of the doorway goes all the way past here and goes right to here, right to the top of that plant. There's another big line that I can see. Then there's actually a line almost on the red line. That's where the light, the light is starting to start right there. So I'm going to put a little light right there. And then it focuses up to this tabletop. There's a line that goes to the tabletop. There is a line right underneath this red line too that stops where this, this pattern of um, cobblestones kind of looks in right here. But it stops right here. Is that important for me to put that in there, that white line? No, I'm not going to put that line in there. And so I don't need to have that line. So, so far I've got my big picture stuff happening. Now this is a, this line. And then all these people, there's a bunch of people sitting here. And there's one right here. And there's a lamp right here. And I have to look for the big picture. What is the big part? And so here, this dark. I know there's a little dark halo and this is all foliage and this is all dark in here. So I'm just going to put this little halo of dark through here and then right along here, there's a rooftop thing, some kind of rooftop thing back here and it goes all the way to this building right here. And that looks like the top of the rooftop of something. And we have a little lamp, a little rectangle lamp right there. And then we have this all is people, a bunch of people, a bunch of, um, so what I do is I outline the whole thing and just kind of put it in there knowing that this is going to be all the way right to this point. There's a bunch of people. So I'm just going to like make this all, this is all going to be dark. And there's one guy, the server here, right there next to this pole. And I know this is smaller, but I'm kind of combining them all together. So this whole area here is all going to be kind of a dark, a dark, and then I'll, that'll be detailed. I'll get to that later, the details. The plants that are all hanging around, that's a detail, so I'm not going to worry about that yet. And so this is the side of the building. Then there's a right here, right from here to here, there's a line. And then there's another, let's see what that is. It's like a rooftop or an umbrella up there. Looks like there's an umbrella up there of some type. So I'm just going to make um, a little note of that. But then uh, there's a lot of foliage up here. And this foliage right here is all lit up like a vine. There's a vine probably a grapevine um, or hysteria. Or hysteria. <laughs> um, this is just a plant. And so I'm just going to make this all part of the dark. 
This is like comes down and this is more detailed, but I'm looking at the big picture of things. And so right here, right in the center, there's a little bit of dark and then the people, there's gonna be some people in here. And so I know they kind of come right in here. I'm just gonna lay that down. And so now let's go over here and figure this picture out. So here we have the top of the stair, the top of the stair right at this point goes across, goes up, goes over. And then there's this big line. Again, I'll point it to you. This line right here, this is a big line, right? And it'll, it'll show me where everything is. And so I'll, I'll do that from here to about, let's see, it's all the way down. Let's establish this line. It's basically putting a puzzle together. I'm just putting puzzle pieces together little by little, trying to get them to look and it doesn't go up to that red line. And by having the red line there, it shows you how I'm, I can see that. And so if it, if it helps you out to put a line there, that's fine. Again, don't put it in red, because um, especially this kind of pencil, that's a, um, it's a um, regular color pencil, which is waxy, and that will not come off, it will not erase. So you don't want that. But if you need to put a little bit of a, a paint in there, that's fine. Now look at, and I'm looking at my camera, and I'm looking at this, even my picture is a little bit, because I'm using a camera, this line looks um, a little bowed, right? Because my whole side of my thing, but that's the camera doing that. It's in, if, if you're looking at my picture right here, oh, you can't see that, but it's it's straight. It's straight on the paper page. The camera, it shows you right there that the camera really affects angles on things. And so you have to make them whatever they are, like in real life, and knowing that it will be that way. So from this point right across going down is where this is at and then there's a little thickness to the top here there's a window up here so this is dark and this again these are big lines because it helps you to then establish other little things don't put those little things in until you get these lines in there i'm telling you it's just too hard i noticed people um do that where they're they're taking small things like they start at this table and they'll put the table and they'll put the chair in. But then it may be not in the right place compared to everything else in the whole entire picture. And this is the way you paint. When you're painting, you do the big. Remember, we always do the big. We start out with all the lights and then we go to the big mediums and darks. And then we go to the small, the detailed stuff. And that's the same thing with drawing. You go with the big stuff first and it'll all fall into place because then it all will fit together. It will fit together perfectly. And here we have this coming down over down and basically it's kind of fun doing this too because it's like putting a puzzle together because when you get done it's like aren't you always happy when you get that last piece in you know and so when you're doing the little detail stuff all of a sudden you realize man these are all everything's falling into place perfectly you know and that makes you really happy that you know that you <laughs> got the, the puzzle done your painting is you know getting closer and closer to done as you're doing this it's got a little bit wide and if it's off a little bit you know if it's off a little bit that's okay you know i'd rather have it off a little bit than a lot like that when i see people do it really small and there are artists i'm gonna say this right now there are a lot of artists who do it that way i know richard schmidt used to start with the eye and put the other eye in and it would turn out okay in the end but we're doing a whole picture and so the whole picture has to fall together as one and not piece by piece don't do small pieces first it's just it's too hard to get things to fall into place if you are also when you are tracing when you are tracing keep in mind these these proportions i'm doing right now because it helps you to realize then when you're tracing what it takes to what's the most big parts that you have to do first because even when you're tracing i like to do the big parts first you know um because it, it gets you gets your mind understanding how to look for the big picture first get the big stuff in there see and i'm getting smaller and smaller and look at how that fit that lamp just fit right into the place everything is just coming together because it fits really well and the red line is there and it's it, it, and also look at right here i noticed that right a little bit on this side kind of comes down to the tap right here goes up halfway halfway up here kind of comes around there's like a little bit oval and it kind of comes down to the edge right into the edge of this and this is like an edge and this is all going to be dark later when painting i'm going to i'm going to 
shaded in now just to show you. I wouldn't do this normally. Like I don't do this on the paper, but this is a good way of doing value study too. And then this is really dark in here. Just to show you where, where what part is what part. And then there's a line that goes right here, right in the middle between those, there's another line. It comes all the way down to here. And so if you're looking at the, the big pick, the big lines, the big lines that I'm going to make them really dark, those are, are the important lines. Those are the ones that are going to be the dark against the light type of things that we're doing. And all these little, little lines that I have, these details will not be put in as darkly because those are, those can be a little bit off. Like that's just plant, plant life here. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to just show you by making this part dark, just to show you what's dark and what's light. And this is all dark. And this is what you would do in a value study. You would um, do the big big picture type of stuff. Here there's a chair. And do, uh, this is where you change things too. You know, this is where when you're sketching it on, I'm changing things. Here's people. Maybe I make this a little bit more, more knowing what this is actually is by drawing it better than the, the picture shows. But then again, this is all the big stuff. And now I'm doing little by little, I'm getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And here's right on the edge of this is, is the edge right here, almost on the red line. See how things sometimes, some things fall right into their line of, um, there's another line that goes this way. Now the den the detail stuff, um, you can go crazy with it. That's it. That all, I'll determine when you're sketching it like this. And that's how come I realize that when I see people doing hyper realism, they're not doing this because it's just, it would take them even longer. So they're tracing, they're tracing stuff right from the photograph and they're making it um, really super detailed. Now, if it's if it's as simple as subject matter, but if it's like really complicated and like crystal and stuff, they're putting it in there, they're tracing it. And if they aren't, they're doing a really good job of making these rectangular shapes like this because they need to have it perfect, right? Now, the people that are gonna be a center of interest, and by the way, we are painting, this is what we're painting this coming Thursday. So um, you're gonna have to draw this. And so try to try to freehand it this time. Um, just um, give yourself a chance and try to freehand it. I will be freehanding it when I do the painting this week. And so um, hopefully I'll do it, show you how to do it really quickly because now I've done it like three times already. <laughs> so I will have known what I'm gonna do right away, but I will show you how I'm gonna do it again for those of, it, those of the people that didn't watch this. Uh, I'm gonna explain that again. And so it's important to learn how to freehand sketch and how to do the big to small. And now I'm doing details, right? But, but, and also this is where I would take maybe another sheet of paper or another photograph. If I don't have a, what I like on this photograph, I may find another image of people walking or doing something different from what I see on the picture because they are part of my center of interest. And so I may place them up there. I may put them closer, maybe put them farther away. But that's that's detail. That's doesn't it has nothing to do with the overall picture and how it's going to look, and trying to draw it on. So always big to small, big to small. All right, and so that's that's my darks, and there's my dark. There is a shadow that goes through here, and so this lighting right here is going to be really nicely in there. And so this is they're pretty much in the shadow, and then I'll put a chair there, and so that's basically it, guys. Um, so. When you're drawing, when you are freehanding, freehanding a sketch, work for the big lines first. Do not start out with this guy and then work away from there. It's just, that's not the way, I know there, like I said, there, I know there are people that do it that way, but it's it makes it way too hard because you may get halfway through and realize, oh shoot, I misplaced something right from the get-go. I put, I put that person in the wrong spot right from the get-go and everything is based on that one person, no do it on these big lines and then you'll realize that everything will fall into place really nicely. So, I mean, look at this compared to this. It's very close to the, where this, where these images are. And this is freehanding. Um, you know, I'm freehanding it and some things like this, if you look at this, it's almost lined up right across from here. Right. But let me show you. So if I'm looking at this and I'm looking across, see, it's almost in the same spot. And I, I didn't do that here on the computer. I'm just doing it here. I mean, there is no picture next to me right here. In this area right here, there is no picture. This is on the screen. So it's, um, I, I'm not taking it and putting it over. I am just looking at it and then looking down at my painting, but I have the grid. 
So practice that, practice freehanding, and this you can do in a sketchbook. I, will, I am coming out with a sketchbook to teach you how to work from your imagination. Not so much about this stuff, but how to just look at an object and picture these things like I'm showing you, but you're gonna memorize that. And then you put them down onto your paper. All right, so I will see you on Thursday and we'll be painting this scene and we're gonna be sketching it on there and we'll be sketching it on together. <laughs> and so I will be sketching for the first time. I normally don't sketch it, I have it sketched on already first. But I'm starting to realize in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to talk a lot about the drawing because drawing is number one thing on my list of um, most important things in watercolor. The number one thing is your drawing. Number two, of course, is the composition and all that kind of stuff. And so um, we'll see you Thursday and practice your large to small, large to small. All right. Until then, we'll see you later. Bye bye.